Greetings and salutations, this is Imperator Vespasian and it's Trusty Sidekick. Hello. Today we are having a look at the Perry Miniatures Desert Rats of 1940 to 1943. Isn't that Japanese, a gun? No, it's a brand gun. The Japanese version is, uh, the Type 99 is probably a copy. It looks exactly the same. It, it does. Um, if you actually, I actually use the Type 99s in the brain gun carriers because they look identical to these, the actual model on it. Hmm. Um, is the same. So, just, it's interesting that you brought that up <laughs> because I was just thinking that um, when I put the brain gun to get carriers together. Um, yeah, here we have some British 8th Army troops or generic British troops in short, but we're going to call them 8th Army for the sake of an argument. Um, we will pop them out of the box for reasons you all know by now. That's a lot. Do we get a little? Oh, not the brown. Yeah, they're brown. They're khaki, actually. Khaki. So using the other ones. Right. We have in it a nice little instruction guide, which gives you lots of pictures of little men, which, which is which is always nice. Yeah. Little. This is how you put them together. If you're numbers. If you're thick, you now know how to put them together. Uh, and that is. Oops. Sorry. Uh, that is the organisation. Uh, this is very useful. I, I do, I do I admit it's really useful because it actually has a force organization chart included in the box, which is cool, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and I wish companies would do this more often because if you've got someone who doesn't play the game, you yeah, don't, you don't the game, know, they're going to pay the person to do that a lot. I thought they just had spare space on the back of the sheet, didn't they? I just decided to stick that on. Um, uh, what what um, it, it's useful if someone just buys a kit brand new and they've never had these figures before, they get a little bit of information about how they how the sections go together. Hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was quite a clever idea. Uh, that is a complete platoon, uh, which is what you get in the box. So that's quite good. Um, anyway, anywho, um, I'll move that out of the way. So we will start on the actual figures. Okay, we have included in the box. Let's angle the camera. Yeah, we'll do it in a second. Um, the large bases used for the heavy weapons teams, and some very, very, very small bases, which are used for the infantry. Um, the bases are a lot smaller than the normal bases you get. Um, can you pass me one of those figures over there, one of those chaps? Um, these are the size bases you get. And this is a clear plastic base, but don't worry about that. You can see the difference in size. Actually, being a clear base, that's quite useful. You can see the difference in size of the base. It's a little bigger. Yes. Um, so if you're using these figures with other, other ranges, um, you'll find the bases will be the wrong size. Um, we tend to base everything on clear plastic bases. Yeah, so it... You, bleh, bleh, words. Yeah, although our 1940s stuff is actually not been based on clear plastic bases. There's a reason we're not doing that. Paint on that? No. Um, we will get into that later. Right, so we have these. Um, can I get a really good, nice close-up of these chaps? Um, how good is that? It's pretty nifty. Pretty nifty. Yeah. Right, so there we have it. I'll just uh, add a bit of light to it. That better? Let there be light. Yeah. Doesn't look bad, does it? Right, we have, this is the command sprue, which often companies do do. They tend to add a command sprue for some reason. Uh, Perry does it a lot, and uh, so does um, Griffin Beast. They often well, have They are Perry miniatures. Yeah, these are Perry's, that's what I just said. Um, we have a radio operator, that's the radio there, and an NCO who's walking forward as if he's been riding a bicycle his entire life. Um, and he's sort of pointing and saying, come on men, let's advance slowly towards the enemy. Which is great, it's just what you want out of your officer. He's in shorts. Yeah, they're in shorts. Yeah. You've got something to say about that, haven't you? No, I think I'll leave it for later in a minute. Okay, right. Yeah. They're all the officers, I'll leave it to the actual men. Right. Three bases, uh, sorry, three moss brews of identicals. And they're all so, in shorts. Yes, they're all in shorts. Yeah. Do you want to say something about that? <laughs> this is your specialist subject, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You, you... British Army in shorts, in a non shorty area where, you know, 
Right, name all the areas where these guys mostly fought. Um, well, I'm gonna say uh, North Africa and Malaya. Malaya? Yeah. Oh, Malaya? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, against Japanese? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that, that place. In the jungle, yeah. That place, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in shorts. In shorts, yeah. In shorts. Mm. Where they have malaria. Yeah. <laughs> Caused by cuts. Yes. Yes. To your legs. Yes. When you have shorts. In shorts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, like Japanese. The Japanese wore trousers. <laughs> and didn't die of malaria. And long sleeve sleeve t shirts. Sorry, we're making fun of people who died. Sorry. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, you horrible person, how dare you? <laughs> no, right. Um, to, just to get this straight. The 8th Army um, is the army you can see here, the Desert Rats for the 8th, primarily the 8th and 5th and 6th armies. Um, they were the troops who fought in the desert and they wore trousers. Uh, sorry, they wore um, shorts at the outbreak of war, which is remarkably stupid. You see, someone came up with the idea in the war office, out of the desert, it's quite sunny there, isn't it? Uh, we'd better put them in shorts. Right? They even gave them sun hats, which are equally stupid to wear Yay. in the desert. And some British troops, I didn't, instead of wearing the helmet, they actually started the war wearing the sun hat. Um, but in the British Army's defence, the Germans did the same thing. The they, Germans they were, they did they, exactly they, the same thing. They weren't fighting Malaya. Yeah, no, they weren't. <laughs> but that, that was it. So they sent the British Army out in shorts. Now, if you ever look at photographs of the desert war, you will notice something about the soldiers, except the very, very early war. Um, you'll notice something about the soldiers. Not when they're marching, in, ma marching off the troop ships in 1940, not then, but when they're actually um, in combat. You'll notice they wear big, thick woolen overcoats, thick woolen trousers, <laughs> and massive boots with, with, with wraps around their feet, because it's really cold in the desert. <laughs> you put troops in shorts in the desert, when it gets night time, they freeze to death. Yeah, it's, it's the hottest place and the coldest place. Yeah, why don't Arabs wear shorts? Because <laughs> they're not stupid. They know what they're doing, alright? This has evolved over thousands of years. People in the desert have learned how to live in the desert. We turn up in shorts. I'm surprised we didn't have a nice little sombrero or something, just so we look cool. Yeah, nice Hawaii t-shirt. Yeah, Hawaii t-shirt, that's it. That's the, yeah. so, so, unbelievably stupid uniform to wear. Really stupid. Dumb, dumb uniform. Also, the khaki jacket that we wore, made out of the same material as the shorts, when it got wet, it went really stiff. And so when it got cold, it froze. So. The jackets would get soaking wet during the daytime because the men would sweat profusely and they would have to drink a huge amount of water. Um, they would take their jacket off and put on their coat because they carried a bedroll with them and uh, a bit, an overcoat and they put their coat on and hang their jacket up, uh, their shirt up and in the morning it would be frozen solid with sweat because the sweat was in the jacket. Um, yeah, really dumb, really dumb. Um, now in Malaya You've already mentioned this. Malaya. Some of the troops who were supposed to be fighting in the desert, um, the Japanese suddenly, nasty, nasty, nasty people there, attacked Malaya without us suspecting remotely that they were going to do it. Of course, we knew all along they were going to attack Malaya, we just didn't do anything about it. Um, the Slim, who was in charge, uh, was it Slim or Percival? It's Percival, sorry. Percival, who was in charge, um, he knew the Japanese were going to attack, and so he wanted to annex the, the, the country next door. With shots. Yeah, with shots. He wanted to annex the country, and so he said, if we take this bit here, the Japanese have nowhere to land. Um, and the war office said, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. And of course, that's where the Japanese landed, and, and we lost the war. We, we lost Malaya. Um, so here... It was uh, mainly because the shots, though. Yeah. So, so these troops are then diverted to go to Malaya. They're supposed to be fighting against the Germans and the Italians. Uh, at, that, at that time, mainly the Italians. I don't think there were any Germans there at the time. Um, so they're supposed to go and fight Italians in the desert, and the ships, the troop ships, were redirected and sent all the way around the world to Malaya. They got off the boats and went to fight the Japanese wearing shorts. Um, That's my type of Yeah, some of the actual troops already in Malaya actually were in trousers. They were called Anzacs and Canadians. They weren't stupid. Oh, and the Australians also wore trousers because they weren't stupid. Because they'd lived in jungles, they knew what jungles were like, they knew you didn't wear shorts in, in there. So uh, the Australian troops didn't really suffer from malaria, the British did. 
So these guys get off the troop ships, they march all over, they, they cut their legs on the, on the sharp grass, they catch malaria, they get very ill and die. And so they're doing this at the same time as the Japanese are fighting them. Hence the large amount of casualties in um, when the Japanese took them prisoner because they were already dying. Because of shots. Uh, very few died after that initial die-off period. It was um, all because of the shots then? It, yes, because of the shots. The shots were unbelievably stupid. Um, the British also carried too much equipment. You don't actually see it on these figures. But the British actually... This, the, these British guys are... I would assume to be used as um, light infantry, uh, standard infantry that would be assigned to vehicles. Yeah, but that's because we're postponed to bad luck, so we just need all the essentials just in case something breaks. Yeah, these guys need backpacks. Yeah, if your leg breaks, you know, you've got a walking stick. Yeah, yeah that, that would be useful actually. Yeah. If everyone was given a walking stick, you, yeah. could, you, could, you could limp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, when the troops got to Malaya, they didn't have the. Um, transport vehicles. Uh, they didn't have uh, universal carriers or trucks because they had to walk everywhere because the roads were rubbish. Well, like Japanese. Yeah, uh, so they had to carry all their kit with them. So you imagine walking through the jungle in shorts, I'm not going to say anything else about that, with... The funny thing about shorts, right? 80 pounds You would have thought it would be water. so significant that you would lose the entire war because of shorts. Yeah, it, it, it was just dumb. Yeah, shorts. Well, I've, uh, hats off to the Australians, they, they knew what they were doing. They were issued shorts and they went, nah, I'm not having shorts. No way, shorts, you're not getting me any shorts. Um, a few other things the Australians did, they, 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 they got a bad rep uh, during, during the, the, the battles um, because the, the, the Australians were blamed um, for running away at the very end. Um, so the Canadians, uh, the Canadian troops up in uh, the, 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 the Canadian troops in Hong Kong, the, the Canadian troops around there, that they, they were. I'm trying to think which which regiment it was. One of the Canadian regiments. Um, no, uh, the, the names escape me. But they got blamed for running away, basically. Um, what is forgotten is that they'd actually been fighting a rear guard for weeks against the Japanese. Uh, they'd been engaged solidly for three days in the mangrove swamps and they'd run out of ammo. And then they fall back to the positions the British are supposed to be holding and the British hadn't manned them. The British had run away themselves. And so the British blamed everything on the Australians. Um, there were quite a few Australians managed to make it to the ships that were trying to escape the harbour. And so that's, 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 why blamed we, that's why Paul Slevis is over there. So, you know, they can just... Blame little Dennis Myers for all the problems. Well, it was really the war office trying to blame, pass the blame to someone else because they didn't want to blame themselves. Uh, the Australians had some of the best. Um, all the Australians had to say, right? Combat was well. It was it was war office's fault because they issued everyone shots. Yeah, well, that would be blaming someone in the British government. Yeah, yeah, and and you can, you're not allowed to do that. Right. Um, because they want a nice big pension at the end of it. Oh. See, civil servants don't really care who wins the war because they're still going to get paid whoever was a country. So if the Japanese would have invaded England, the civil servants would still be running the, running the place. And they're signing shots to people. We're like on the other side of the world to Japan. Yeah. I mean, obviously they were never actually going to invade us. I was just using it as a for instance. But if you want to take everything I say literally, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> anyway, figure-wise, the figures are great. Um, you get lots of kneelings. Um, I like troops who are kneeling and moving around. You, in real life, you don't you don't walk like that across a battlefield. Look, see that picture? That picture is is how not to walk across a battlefield, illustrated by the British Army. Um, that's not what you do. Um, they're right. They're, they're actually doing their job. Of yeah, you you lay you, your face is in the dirt. You crawl everywhere. You run from run very very quickly and very very low. Um, to cover and you stay in cover as much as physically possible. Troops who advance over open ground die. And so most of the troops you actually field in your army should actually be kneeling and crouching. Or if running not, really then fast. They're imbeciles. Yeah, or running really fast. And so it's quite nice to get quite a few laying down poses and quite a few kneeling poses. Which also makes it easier to do things like mortars and uh, if you want to make yourself some anti-tank guns you can do that. 
So, yeah, quite good. You get a nice collection of weapons. Um, you have the Bren, which is cool. Uh, and you have rifles. Um, the British Army had a serious dearth of machine guns. Uh, because the War Office, probably the department across the corridor from the one who said we'll put everyone in shorts. Um, yeah, them ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, them ones. Um, they said the British Army doesn't need machine guns because it would use too many bullets. And it's expensive. Um, so they didn't give the British a huge amount of machine guns. So you would have, if you're really, really, really lucky, one machine gun to every two or three platoons. Unlike the Japanese. Unlike the Japanese or any other army on the planet. Um, in fact, some battalions would only have two machine guns. And this is the outbreak of war. So, yeah, it was considered that the British wouldn't need them. Yeah, well, we had near the artillery, so it was fine. Well, we had the Mad Minute, which uh, the Mad Minute is the British Army was trained to fire their rifle continuously, really, really, really quickly for a minute or so. That'll terrify me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the Germans um, actually thought we had machine guns, and they couldn't find them when they overran us. And they couldn't figure out where they were hiding the machine guns. The Japanese said the same when they were fighting the British in Malaya. We hit them in trenches. Yeah, because it sounded like, did, 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 but it was actually everyone was just firing the rifle off as quickly as possible until their hands burned. Um, great thing, unfortunately, after you've been constantly firing your rifle for a few minutes, you can't touch it. For like the next hour? Yeah, it will burn your, it burns your fingers. And the British Army, same war office, was not equipped with gloves. So they didn't have gloves? No. They didn't have trousers? No. They didn't have bicycles? No. They didn't have proper helmets? No. And they all got malaria? And they all got malaria and died, yeah. <laughs> I feel so sorry for this AF army, it's just, just they've had the worst time. But it's just all armies gave machine gunners gloves and mortar crews, uh, any, any equipment troops were given gloves, right? Um, all drivers got gloves because you need, if you're going to be driving a long time, especially in the desert, you're going to need gloves because you're going to burn your hand on the steering wheel. Um, and no, we didn't give gloves to soldiers. So what we'd do, we'd arrive in a town and buy them out of gloves. And we didn't give machine guns. And we weren't issued with machine guns either, no, because they're too expensive to fire too many bullets. You don't want to be firing too many bullets at the enemy because it's expensive, it's a waste of bullets. That's the concern about it. <laughs> That's the concern about it. Yeah, if you ever want to see how a war is run really badly, just look anything up <laughs> like the British Army and you'll find it, seriously. Anything's done by eBay. Yeah. Um, what was it? Wasn't it? Um, um, the, British answer, uh, the British Army's answer to everything. Two Chinook helicopters. That's their answer to everything. What's the worst thing about the Chinook? I don't know. Why is it? it it's just really, really, really bad platform to carry stuff on. But they bought so many of the things, um, we had to use them. So we, we kind of... The British Army um, is just... The people on the ground are great. British squad is great. Um, all these troops, even the ones who are conscripted, are good troops, really good troops. And they and will, died in malaria. Yeah, the, the British Tommy, um, even though they're forced to fight by the government, they will actually fight until the end. They, 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 they will fight. Um, and they won't run away, unlike some countries. <coughs> France. Um, <laughs> um, well, sorry, they, they were conscripted troops. They didn't want to fight. I don't blame them. Um, hey, British, can you, just, can, can you cover our street? Yeah, sure. Goodbye, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what happened. Um, yeah, so uh, the, uh, the, the British Army was um, a, a good army, but the people behind the planning weren't particularly Loved good. Loved shots. Yeah, they liked shots, they thought gloves were, were bad, um, and they, they just, the, the, the people at the top just were planning... The helmets were just weird, you don't need helmets. No, they were really planning for the last war. They thought they were fighting the First World War again. Where it wouldn't be any doing moving around the desert, we would spend all the time in a trench. So you'd be a lot of sunbathing involved. So shorts, sun cream, um, anything like that would be good. Um, but not actual stuff that would do you any good in combat. And the British Army has not changed. It's still... Well, they need it with lasers. What would lasers do? Are we talking 40k lasers or... Laser sights. Laser sights. What use would a laser sight be? Night time. 
But then you need night vision goggles. Exactly. So it's not lasers you're worried about, it's night vision goggles. Yeah. So you need night vision searchlight. Look, all you need, right? So you need night vision searchlight, which has to be carried on a vehicle. No. You need night vision goggles, which no. would have to be equipped with all your troops. No. And you would need... What? That's not what I'm saying. Right, go on. All you need is it's everyone with night vision goggles. Okay. And the way it's pitch black at night, okay. you just run into the German camp and kill them all. That's not very nice. You're supposed to take them prisoner. No. No, okay. Um, yeah, well, alright, now night vision goggles. Do you know how much the battery pack of a night vision goggle, goggle carries, uh, is to carry? I'm a high commander, cost. I don't care. Um, okay, well, you've got to get the night vision stuff. I'm a high commander, You've got to spare, pa a carry commander. a spare pack of, pack of batteries. You've just added four I'm bags... I'm going to make it way even smaller shots. Yeah, you just added four bags of sugar to the weight the guy's got to carry in the first place. Machine gun if He's also got to carry all his ammunition. <laughs> He's got to carry all his ammunition. He's got to carry two days worth of food. He's got to carry enough water. In the desert, that's a lot of water. He's going if they to keep complaining, I take away all your machine guns. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, that's it. That's, that's, I'm, I'm not getting any more on that. I, I could talk about the British Army for ages and my annoyance with certain parts of it. Um, but um, the reason the British Army is a tiny army today is because all this stuff that you've got. There's no now costs so much money you cannot actually field a large army because all the air equipment is going to cost a lot of money and even then some soldiers still buy their own kit because a lot of the kit they're issued with is, is just subpar it's not as good as the stuff the enemy have got put it that way what they should really do is give every British soldier uh, an eBay account I did that. Yeah, and, and just like a subsidy and say, buy a kit. And they can just go on eBay or any other site and just find all the stuff they can get. Yeah, then you get dumping in that, sir. Why? Pretty bad. Oh, pretty bad. Oh, yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to buy a British home guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm a Nazi. <laughs> you know, a Nazi because you're wearing a British home uniform. Home. Yeah. Okay. This <laughs> is because people don't know what uniforms look like. Honestly, I, people really don't. Um, I, I own an East German uniform from the 1970s, and people think it's a World War II German uniform because they're stupid. They just don't. They, they don't know what they're looking at. That's the that's the thing. Um, and of course, I've got my Marines uniform as well. A oh, dress uniform. The Russian one as well, aren't you? I know I threw that away before I came. Uh, Russian, yeah, the Russian jacket. Yeah. It, it didn't survive. Um, but I've got my marine, my marine uniforms in perfectly good nick. Um, I haven't had it, had it out in years, but it's still in the it's still in a box. Yeah, we still not finished unpacking it. Not mm. room. It's depressing, isn't it? Mm. Right. Anyway, um, I'm gonna uh, wrap this video up. Um, I hope we've not gone on too much about stuff. But the, it's always me that wraps the video up, so you're lying. Oh right. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, I, I, I will add another last point. Um, um, th th these troops are not going to be Desert, uh, desert Force troops, the de des 8th Army. No, they're going to be in Malayan troops. Yes, these troops are going to be for fighting in Malaya. Mm. Um, which is going to be interesting, um, because I'm going to be using them in Malaya. Uh, so, I can use the helmets for something else, which is another project you're going to see very soon. So, you're going to wear Australian cowboy hats. I love Australian cowboy hats. Then another thing, the Dutch. The Dutch wore trousers. Why were we the only country that wore, that wore shorts? We were running out of cotton. Yeah, expense, you see. How much money did you save by like, not making full length? Yeah, you, you, you saved 50% of cotton. Yeah, that typical British Empire foreign <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it, yeah. We'll save money by... Yeah, even that cloth. didn't save the British Empire. No, you didn't. Yeah, the Empire still fell, you <laughs> idiots. If only you'd have added... Four inches of cloth, we could have saved the empire. You penny pinching scoundrels. And now you have to think about the guns, though. You need more machine guns. Hey, I'm not going to knock the Lee Enfield. Uh, the Lee Enfield was a a very good gun, and it, you could use the ammunition on um, other stuff as well. So it 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 it, it was a useful it was a useful tool to have, and it's dead easy to clean. It's way better than easy to clean in the car in 98. 
Well, Cat 98 was a horrible rifle to clean. Well, yeah, I mean, we do have one, don't we? I've got a Cat 98, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate using it. Yeah, it's, it, but it's horrible to clean. It's just keeping the thing clean is, is, is bad. Let's get used to it, it's fast to reload. Um, and the Lee Enfield, I know it's supposed to be prone to jamming in the desert, but um, aren't all rifles? What do you mean? In the desert. All, all, all rifles are prone to jamming. Yeah, that's how rifles because work. Because sand gets into them and they just gum up, and you've got to put a lot of oil on, which collects even more sand. So, yeah. Uh, although the the Germans used Russian equipment, which didn't gum up, so they actually didn't use German equipment. Um, they used captured Russian equipment because they they just operated better in the desert. Just a fun fact, in case you're interested. Uh, or nearly all the anti-tank guns the Germans used were Russian in the desert, uh, the, and uh, a lot of the howitzers were Russian as well, uh, and all the machine guns were. They hardly had any MP40s in the desert at all. They used to give the MP40s to the Italians. Because the PPSH was just a better gun. Because you could use it in close combat. You can use an MP40 in close combat, but you can use the PPSH in close combat. But anyway, I've gone off on one again. Sorry, end of video. You, you do if the you end video. Please like, and subscribe, and put down below what you think of the shorts, men. And. I'll see you that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and making it this far in the video. Yeah. If you're still watching, you get a sticker or something. Yeah, we'll buy a sticker yeah. shot. We'll, we'll give you a sticker. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.